Hey y'all, I am bathtub vlogging again tonight and um, I'm digging it because I've got a new camp, well it's a new phone, a new Samsung phone. It's not, well, I'm trying to steady this on my quick pod that's <sighs> resting on the floor of my bathroom. Anyway, um, yeah, my husband brought this home from Costco. It's a, I don't know, Samsung Gallery Galaxy narrower and bigger than normal camera so but it's not the latest one so I don't know what it is however um I was oh god the past day or two again I'm like brain dead when it comes to figuring out what I want to vlog about however the lovely Brenda Crozier did um the intuit, intuitive intuitive tag I think it's called the intuitive tag and I intuitives tag and I thought, okay, yeah, cool. I, I think I'm intuitive. Let's find out. So without further ado, question number one, share, I keep looking down to read it, share your first paranormal experience that comes to mind. Well, actually, my first paranormal experience really wasn't mine. It was a story that my mother told me. And I was quite young because in later years, she, um, she denied that she ever told me this story in the first place. Um, and essentially it involves her being a very young girl, maybe two or three years old, playing out in the yard. There was a mud puddle and um, she lived in Oklahoma at the time. <clears throat> and, you know, mud puddles looked like you know, ponds or lakes to a little kid. And she was squatting down on the edge of this mud puddle and she was looking at it very hard and concentrating on it because she believed that if she thought um, intense, intently enough that she could fly right over that uh, mud puddle. So she hunkered down and she, she concentrated on the water and she concentrated on the water and she claims that she levitated up off the ground and floated across the pond or puddle and was sat down on the other side. Oh, she was so thrilled about this. She ran into the house. She ran into the kitchen where her mother was standing at the, uh, uh, the sink, which faced, had a window that faced the backyard. Oh, mama, she says, I flew, I flew. She said that the look on her mother's face was pure terror. Her mom, hung her down, grabbed her by the shoulders and said, no, you didn't, you didn't fly. People can't fly. You didn't fly. You didn't fly. So, interesting. Um, I, my reality and what feels like just on the other side of the scrim into the paranormal, that's always been so thin that I can't really remember my first experience with feeling something akin to that. Um, so, um, have I ever had a premonition? Of course, I think most people have. Um, sometimes premonitions are based on some sort of internal rhythm that you are um, um, in tune with. I think sometimes it's uh, just based on, you know, uh, happenstance. And sometimes I think it is based on um, some sort of knowing. Um, and I've had enough of them, and I think that it's, most of mine probably aren't based on circumstance. I think they're based on some sort of, some kind of precognition, but I don't, I don't view magic and the paranormal as being anything, I don't think there's anything para about it. I think that the magic that we feel in life, the things that occur, that happen to us that could be labeled magic or paranormal, really aren't. They're just based on, you know, universal um, laws and conditions that we haven't quite nailed down yet. We don't quite understand. So that's my take on it. And yes, I've had a lot of premonitions. Um, when uh, did I get my first tarot or oracle deck? Well, I don't read tarot um, or oracle decks or any sort of cards or divination um, uh, tools. Um, at least I don't do it now. And uh, But I do have a tarot deck and it was given to me by the lovely Gabriella over at uh, Emily Pound. Check out her channel. It's really awesome. She's really awesome. Great woman. Um, love you, Gabby. And she gave me the uh, 
just recently the Tell Me Tarot, which is a kind of a beginner deck that um, each card explains what what it's referring to um, in human experience. So that was really sweet, and I keep it in my I keep it in my makeup drawer in my desk, so I see it every day when I open up the makeup drawer. Um, yeah, um, that was okay. Let's see. Um, uh, what um, element do you most connect with? Well, huh, it's water. Um, I used to, I, I, I was told I was a triple water sign, but when I, I just had my chart done again, and, well, well, I did it online. I mean, I haven't had it done by an astrologer, so I may be off on this, but um, I, ha I am Scorpio, which is a water sign. Uh, I have a Pisces moon, which is a water sign, and um, my ascendant is in uh, Gemini. So I'm a double water sign. I've always been... Um, attracted to the water. I My next move will be uh, to within eyesight of either the ocean or a river or a lake. I, God, I need water so badly. Um, this, the past four years here in Central California have been horrible, as you guys know. The drought is awful and there's very little water. Um, my kid was up uh, in the High Sierras uh, last weekend um, at a place that normally at this time of year has just this rushing um, torrents of water coming over granite rocks and there are natural pools and all sorts of frightening sinkholes and it's just really, a, it's always been an excitingly watery place, you know, year round. Um, there is a trickle about uh, six inches wide, he said, um, where the rushing torrent that spanned these two banks used to be. Um, all of the granite is exposed, all the rocks, all of the sinkholes, which is really scary because um, one year when my kids were little, we were there at that very spot and um, a man had just been pulled into a sinkhole and uh, you know they never recovered his body. And it had happened within five minutes of us coming upon the scene. I mean, it was, it was, it was heart-wrenching, it was horrible. Um, and what was really horrible is the kids and I would play in those pools all the time. So, you know, one of the many things I did wrong as a parent that, um, you know, could have resulted in um, awful tragedy. And the gods and goddesses, the universe, the cosmos, whatever, karma, I don't know, had its uh, head on, hand on our heads during those times. So, yeah, I'm definitely all about water. Um, Uh, do I believe in fairies? No, I don't. Um, I don't believe in, in little people per se, leprechauns and fairies and sprites and nymphs, nymphs, uh, demons for that matter. Um, not in corporeal form anyhow. Um, I think in art and literature, um, those images were created, and this is my theory, and I could be dead wrong. They're, they may, may very well exist. I don't know, but I don't. I don't feel that they do. Anyhow, I thought that I think that they were created to express things like, um, you know, uh, the energies on the. Like I said, the energies on the other side of the scrim, the um, the things that we um, think have used the term magic for that uh, really probably have a very understandable um, origin. So um, no, I actually don't uh, believe in little people. Um, um, oh, okay. Number six is, um, do I prefer the moon or the sun? Okay. That is a really hard question and not because I feel an affinity to either one, but because I feel um, a bit of an aversion to both. Um, my aversion to the sun is that I do not like it on my skin. I don't like the sun touching my skin. It invades my car. It invades my clothes. It makes my skin turn dark and freckly and wrinkly underneath hats, underneath long sleeves, underneath sunscreen. Um, for well over six months of the year, I cannot escape it. And I feel, um, I feel as if I'm doing battle with, you know, UVA and UVB and every other spectrum of light um, most of the year, so I really don't like the sun. Um, 
I have a similar feeling with the moon, although if I had to choose, it would be easier because um, my my real affinity is with the moon. And like you said, Brenda, it's I feel the pull of the moon. I feel its um, its effects on my body, on my mind. Um, and I guess maybe women just do, I don't know, but I'm very sensitive to it. My issue with the moon is that it finds its way in between my curtains or my blinds, under my door, you know, practically through my ceiling, and it shines its, you know, intense beam of light right into my eyes and it wakes me up and I'll, you know, if I haven't truly closed down all the, the curtains and the blinds and everything uh, before I go to sleep and that moon rises, I will wake up ah, startled, ah, to my eyes, ah, who is that, ah, get away. I mean, it really freaks me out. So, um, I choose the moon only with um, some conditions. Um, and what um, is my favorite crystal or stone? Well, that's simple, it's diamond is my favorite crystal. And not because of um, polished stones on your fingers either. Um, diamonds have always fascinated me. Uh, the lore behind them, um, so much of their bloody history, which I don't feel good about, but it is interesting to read about. Um, I have looked into polished stones and seen things. Um, moving around, and I'm sure it's just the light, you know, flashing off of all those facets, but I feel drawn into them, into polished stones, particularly when they're brilliant cut stones, because they're, and, and well-cut stones, because the light is at its most active um, in that kind of a stone. Um, I feel drawn, like, like it's pulling me into its center. Um, I also, um, I'm drawn to and love uncut diamonds, those Herkemeyer, Herxigermer, I don't know how to pronounce it. Anyway, they're real trendy right now, making jewelry out of uncut, di unpolished uncut diamonds. Um, I find them fascinating, but it is truly what they can do to light that nothing else is able to do that draws me to them. Um, also, I'm drawn, I'm sweating like a pig, oh God. Hang on, I'm gonna wipe some of this off. Um, I'm also drawn to, to diamonds because of their um, their hardness. I mean, they're the hardest element known. And I, so I'm, I'm drawn to extremes of things. Excuse me, hang on, I'm gonna wipe my mm, dripping face. Hold on. Um, okay, God, so gross. Uh, I'm drawn to extremes of things. The softest of something, the hardest of something, the highest, the lowest. Um, you know, the whitest white, the darkest dark. I'm, I'm really drawn to extremes. Um, although, somewhat paradoxically, I believe that truly there is no um, est of anything. There is no lightest and there is no darkest. There are only shades of gray, and I'm never going to forget that E.L. James woman for, for bastardizing one of my favorite phrases, shades of gray. No, oh, that just really irritated me. Yeah. Um, so, moving on. Um, okay. Um, can I see spirits or spiritual beings? No, I can't see them, but I can feel what feels like them. Um, um, I'm very sensitive to fields like magnetic fields and um, um, tidal fields. I've, uh, I'm extremely sensitive to a barometric pressure. And I think somewhere amid all of that is my feelings of spirits and things on the other side. So. I don't see them, but I do feel them. Um, would I rather fly on a broom, breathe underwater, make things grow fast, or control fire? Um, even though I'm a water sign, I would um, I would like to be able to fly uh, on a broom with my you know nun hat um, <laughs> with one of those. 
jet packs. I mean, I don't care how I get up there, but I would really like to fly. Not in an airplane. I don't like airplanes because I don't like being constrained. Um, but yeah, I would love to fly. That would be great. Um, and in part, it's because of the answer to the next question, number 10, which is, um, what is the animal totem you feel most connected to? Again, that's easy. It's the vulture. I adore vultures. And where I live, there are many of them. Um, you see them every day, um, just up there, just hanging out in those thermals. It's so majestic, you know, looking down to see what they need to clean up for the day. Um, they're such conservative animals. I love that about them. Um, they, are, they serve such an important purpose in nature. I, and I think they're beautiful. They're, you know, they're big old red heads and they're, you know, 14 foot wingspans or whatever they've got. I mean, they're just freaking amazing. Um, I once had the opportunity to see condors in the wild and it was not too far from where I live. And there's this place called Squaleep, which has been renamed a politically correct name. I think it's the um, San Joaquin River Gorge Overlook or some stupid thing like that. Uh, everybody, all the locals, we still call it Squall Leap, of course. Anyway, um, at, I was driving down to Squall Leap because we were going to take a walk across the bridge. There's this very high suspension bridge over a very narrow river, you know, many, many, many feet down, and it kind of sways when you walk over it. It's just really cool. I love it. And so we're heading over there to take a walk, and as we were driving down into the gorge, I noticed these huge birds sitting up in the trees. There were probably two, I, there were at least two, there might have been more, but I remember seeing two. As we approached that area, we were probably about, I don't know, maybe 100 feet away from this tree that was fairly close to the road, I noticed another bird, and it was sitting just sitting there like a bird, well, standing, you know, standing there like a bird will stand, right next to the side of the road. And it was a condor. The thing was huge. The biggest bird I've ever seen. I mean, it was monstrous. And it looked at us as we approached, and we were like, you know, our mouths were hanging open, and we slid way down, just crept along in the car. As we just about came abreast of this thing, it unfurled its monstrous wings and it flapped them a few times, hopped a little bit and became airborne. It flew over the top of our car. It occluded the sun. I mean, it went, you know, dark like a cloud as the thing passed over. And then we heard this sound, which sounded like a helicopter. And it was the other birds leaving the tree. And all three of them, flew across the car very close and up and away. I would guess the wingspan was a minimum of 12 feet um, because as it flew across, and my car was what, eight feet wide? That's how wide a, the widest car is. Um, it, you could, I mean, you could see those wing tips on either side. It was magnificent. I mean, it was, it was really another one of those indelible memories, kind of like going to Paris. Um, so yeah, that's my, that's my spirit, uh, spirit guide animal. Um, um, tell us about your first spirit guide. Well, it would, it would definitely still be the, you know, the vulture. Um, do you feel more connected to the stars or to the earth? Well, here's another um, uh, unintuitive answer. I'm going to wipe my face again. Hold on. Um, uh, counterintuitive, there you go, that's the word I was trying to think of. Here's another counterintuitive answer. It's not the stars. It's not the s stars per se, or even the fact that they're in the sky. I feel connected to um, the earth in, in a huge way. Um, maybe it's because the earth and the water, um, you know, live basically side by side. They're really part of one another. Um, I've never really felt, outside of wanting to fly, I've never really felt much of a connection to the air or to the stars or, or like, I, like I said earlier, the celestial bodies of any kind, sun and moon for that matter. Um, I'm all about um, terra firma and 
aqua not so firma. I, <laughs> yeah, that's what I like. Um, what is my preferred method of blessing or cleaning? And I'm, I'm going to say blessing or cleaning my home. I mean, it could be blessing or cleaning any object, but I'm going to say home. Um, and my preferred method is actual physical cleaning, um, the act of removing um, items from my house, taking them out in the sun, wiping down from ceiling to floor, getting everything out of the drawers, um, literally cleaning all the surfaces, cleaning the furniture and bringing it all back in. That's step number one of my cleaning and blessing. Um, step number two is this. As I do this action, which I probably only do every couple of years, um, maybe two or three years. It's been three years since I've done it and I need to do it. I feel the need to do it again this year. But um, as I'm doing it, I'm thinking about re-intentioning my possessions to um, support me in balancing my life. Um, I look at each possession and I I try to imagine its place in my life or lack thereof. Sometimes things tell me that they don't need to come back into the house. Um, sometimes things tell me that they need more of them. I mean, it's just, I clean very meditatively, let's put it that way. So it, it is the actual um, um, uh, action of cleaning and doing it in a meditative state that I find um, the most cleansing and um, um, it feels like the most blessing uh, way to do it. So that's that one. And 14 is what color do I feel most spiritually connected to? And that is the color of amethyst. It is amethyst purple. Um, I've talked about loving purple before and I have to qualify that. Um, I'm not fond of real light pastel purples. I'm not fond of real dark intense purples. Um, but that that amethyst color of purple, whether it's light, medium, or dark amethyst, that is the shade of of color, particularly of purple, that I'm most drawn to, and I have no idea why. I'm also drawn to amethyst as a stone. They're number two next to diamonds um, as a favorite stone. And I don't know if there was supposed to be a 15. That was only 14. So 14 is all you will get. So there we go. That is my intuitive tag. And I don't know, maybe I'm not as intuitive as I thought I was. But I had fun doing the tag. I will see all of y'all later.